Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Finished Homesteading. Today we're going to open up this treasure and look at it and see what we got. But this was a kind of an unusual deal. We were we found a lead on an interesting old piece of junk, which I'll do a video on sometime down the road when I get it operational. But when we were there, the guy asked if I collected anything other than what I was looking for and I said yeah old chainsaws and stuff like that and he said well I had a few of them but I got rid of them a while back but I said I got a an old home light out in the barn here do you want to go out and look at it so I said sure so here it is A XL home light water pump. The head here is off an XL12. This one was made in 1974. And there's the pump. This is an inlet and outlet here. And this cap here, you take out and prime it with water to get it to go. And of course, you got your gas tank here. It was only used a couple of times. Let's get a little spring-loaded feet here for vibration. Kind of interesting. This is the pickup hose. Let's get a quick attach here. Just spin it right on there. Another hose here, run it out to wherever you're running the water away from or out to. But so that's just a, a nice addition to my home light collection. We'll talk about a couple other home lights here real quick too. C donated these to me a while back here. We did a video on them. They're 1986 Super Easy Automatics. And they look identical, but they're not. This one has a broken handle, but the thing that's unusual about it, this has a half wrap bar on it. This has a full wrap bar. And then if you look at the muffler, this just has a little guard right here. This has a great big guard. And from what I've been able to find out, the full wrap on here was designed for use in the West Coast, probably more specifically in the Pacific Northwest. I had one of these at one time, a really nice one. And, uh, Smitty from Smitty's Chainsaws and Firewood saw it on a video and really wanted it, so I traded him and so I lucked out and found me another one. So this one I'm going to keep. Anyway, we'll be right back with some more stuff. Well, other things that we collect are vintage lawnmowers. And this is a really unusual one. This one was sold by Montgomery Wards. It says Wards Lakeside Quality. And the lakeside name was used on a lot of their stuff. I actually have a lakeside axe. But um, this is a, one of the very earliest rotary lawnmowers. There's a very few companies that tried making them. And, you know, they got these two front wheels here. They got the main wheels. And they got one in behind, too. But, you know, they were experimenting. They didn't really know what they were doing. Now, this one is probably about a 1948 or 49. It has a Clinton engine on it. And, uh, from 1946 and 47, Clinton engines were made in Clinton, Michigan. And then they moved to, I hope I got the name right, Makakita, Makakita, Iowa, where they were 
big supplier of engines for everything, even in Europe. They're the second largest selling engine in the world, and in 1982 they just collapsed and disappeared. Anyway, we'll come over and take some look at this thing. It's got some pretty unusual features. Well, lawnmower technology from 1950 on really progressed rapidly. This mower here is a 1955 Craftsman. The interesting thing about it is that the deck here, which is a cast magnesium alloy, was originally on a 1952 Lawn Boy. And what Sears would do, they had good, better, and best. And this would be their better mid grade lawnmower because they were selling lawn boys at the time too but they used the power products H 47 engine on them and that way they could cut the cost a little bit and so and then the bottom of the line ones really had a cheapo engine and stuff on them but and used a steel deck but anyway I'll be right back okay well here's a 1954 Lawn Boy. It's got the Lawn Boy Iron Horse engine, the magnesium deck again. And the first year that they had the staggered front wheels here, and they used that almost to the end of production. And what it's for is if you're mowing and you got uneven ground. The offset wheel keeps the mower steady and gives you a really nice smooth lawn where just the wheels at the edge give a rough cut and ups and downs and stuff like that. And so there again, lots of technology in a short length of time. And we've got one more, a couple more to show you. Okay, well here's another mid-50s mower. This has got a Clinton two-cycle engine on it. This has a steel deck. This is your typical kind of economy mower. Uh, they just you know four wheels that all on each corner. And the Clinton engine is better than the power products engine so this one has a hand throttle on it which is shows it's a little bit better than your bottom of the line one but you know you could buy a lawnmower for as cheap as 30 bucks if you got a bottom of the line cheap one with a steel deck like this. But <clears throat> this uh, like I say is a Brenner which is a company that made stamped steel products. And prior to World War II, they made little toy trucks and cars. But you know, lots of people got into the market because it expanded so quickly when the rotary lawnmowers come out. They were cheap and easy to produce. And there were a zillion manufacturers of them. But this one's kind of interesting. It's got little ridges built into the metal deck at places right along here and stuff. What that does keeps them from cracking from vibration. It actually strengthens them quite a bit. So that was a, for just a simple change, it was really a step up. So anyway, we got one more. Okay, well, Mr. Obsolete goes electric. This is a really an unusual lawnmower made by the Sunbeam Corporation, which made hand mixers and kitchen equipment. And like other companies in the mid-50s, early 60s, everybody's branching out trying to find new markets. This was made in the late 50s through the mid-60s. And I also have a Sunbeam reel mower with a Tecumseh engine on it. We'll get out at some point. The thing that's unusual about this has two little short blades. And it's got an outlet on both sides. And you can come up here and here's your power cord hooks here. You got your switch here. You got the carrying handle here. You can flip the blade over. There's a little lock right here to adjust it and stuff. And so when you get to the end of a row, you can just flip the handle over the other side and get behind it and walk back without having to turn the lawnmower around. 
The other thing that's unusual about it is that uh, the drive mechanism for the blades is what's called a Gilmer belt. And that's what is used on modern cars and stuff to run the camshaft and the timing system on them. It's a rubber belt with teeth on them. So this is a very early application of that technology. Pretty unusual way back then. So anyway, there you go. Lots of stuff to collect and fix. Lots of good vintage BS. So we'll see you on the next video. And get busy and start collecting junk like us. It's a great hobby. We'll see you soon. Thank you.